Hey Ratbags, it's Jade. How you doing? Today I am giving you my lowdown on 15 hours I've spent playing Dawn of Defiance. Impressions, feedback for the devs and I guess review whether or not this new open world survival game is worth anyone's time. For sure, short answer, yes it is. Absolutely I think it's going to scratch a niche for certain people for sure, but there are some drawbacks and some plus points I want to go over. So leave a like if you find this video useful and let's go. So what is Dawn of Defiance? It's a 1-4 to co-op survival open world game where you are basically going to run around defeating enemies, gathering resources, building up your Pantheon style looking base and more. It's made by a tiny little studio and I do believe they kind of ended up having to get this out pretty soon as I'm guessing they run out of money as marketing has been pretty light for it and it's going under people's radars massively. And that's a shame because it's quite a polished experience compared to so many other janky survival games I've played. That doesn't mean it hasn't got some of that, but we'll get into that in a while. But straight off, gorgeous environment. The map is stunning, Unreal Engine 5 with all the other bells and whistles making the light look good. Honestly, one of the prettiest environments I have come across in the last couple of years. If you're all about just base building and having really unique locations, I think this game's got tons of that. From the gorgeous coastlines to deserts filled with sandstorms and murky woods, it's got definitely a lot of style and a lot of character as you explore the map. The map is pretty large though, and it does mean that eventually, once you get to the mainland after starting out on a starter island, you start to experience kind of big pockets where there's not a lot going on. And it's a bit of a sharp drop off. The small island that you start off is great. It's got all these points of interest, a la the Skyrim. Get close enough to see something, you might see a question mark pop up on your compass. Get close enough again, and it will reveal what it is, whether it's a temple or brazier that you have to donate some ambrosia dust to. It's all very lead, like you can't really have this moment in Valheim where you've got to work something out or sail for ages before you realise you're going to get to another biome. It is pretty much very simple. The map's revealed straight away so you can check exactly what kind of biome you're heading towards. At its heart, this game is simple to play. And the Star Island has all of that stuff in it. You've got enemies to fight, you've got things to go and explore, find, unlock, get new schematics for weapons and gear and go through the basics of building your base and surviving. But once you get to the mainland, a lot of that just gets stripped away because the map is just too big and just not enough enemies and not enough kind of points of interest to go and explore. There's various types of enemies you'll come across, from wolves, boars and other creatures you'll be using to hopefully get as your food source, hunting them down like deers and rabbits, to more exotic creatures like golems and medusa style gorgons and more. But the more isn't as much as I would like it to be. Considering it's set against the backdrop of so much in Greek mythology, I was disappointed to see actually a lack of enemies and different types to fight. You've got these sort of generic kind of underworld creatures that only pop out at night time or find in caves. They come in various different flavours and difficulty as you progress. And likewise, soldiers that you come across will be in different types and they'll get harder and stronger guarding the temples that you'll find. Fighting golems is fun, there's different types of them as well, like clay ones, silver ones and more, but that's pretty much it for in terms of variety and taking on enemies, and it's pretty disappointing. Where's the skeletons? Where's the Jason and the Argonaut 2 frame per second movement skellies? And more, we need to see a lot more variety of creatures added to the game, guarding the temples. And that's the main focus of the game. You're meant to go and defile all the different temples that you can come across off the gods, with apparently eight of them scattered across the maps. And I figured these would be dungeons, stuff that I would actually go and complete and really have a long time or try and work stuff out. Instead, it ends up being in a check, tick box kind of collect and gather. So one of them might be that you need 20 seashells that you can only get from a specific island that you're meant to only get across by crafting the best stamina potions to fly and glide over. Another temple might be to open the doors that you've got to find certain braziers and set them on light again by feeling and giving them ambrosia dust. And once inside, the rewards are better gear, better armors, legendary weapons like Poseidon's Trident. But I'm not going to lie, I am a bit disappointed they don't lead to something a bit more. Maybe some puzzle elements, maybe some more bigger dungeons to traverse and explore. Just literally small little areas that once you get the loot inside, you'll never return to again. Combat is kind of janky, I don't think it's the worst I've played, it's kind of on par with Conan Exiles, but definitely needs a better lock on, especially using some controller, and they are adding better control support in the future while looks things, although it was adequate enough for me to play. 
and it's kind of got almost a very light Dark Souls vibe. You have to time your attacks well. Stamina pretty much gets eaten up by everything, whether or not you're blocking and holding your shield, getting hit, that reduces your stamina. So it becomes a process of working out when to dodge, when to dive, and when to raise your shield. Definitely recognize some moves from Troy, and it's pretty cool when you lunge attack. Any enemy that can throw a spear or fire an arrow has absolutely eagle eye shots. And for a lot of time you'll end up kind of kiting one enemy away from the others or hiding behind rocks so you don't get overwhelmed. As you progress you're meant to unlock these god powers and some of them are pretty obvious like glide, that's definitely a god power. Uh, dashing out of the way, not so much, but in combination they do help you a lot, especially when it comes to fighting tough opponents like golems, being able to dodge, weave around and get some hits in. But after clearing out two of the other temples, I didn't gain any new abilities, so I'm kind of hoping there are going to be more that make it a bit more interesting, give me some extra godlike powers. There is a good selection of different weapons and armors, well at least some schematics you can either come across and find or buy from a trader, and then eventually you'll be able to go ahead and craft these swords and arm pieces with different alloys, materials that give them better buffs. So you go all the way up from copper to tin to iron, and each one will give you more armor defense on your arms that you craft, or more damage. Eventually you'll also be able to customize these armor pieces with special dyes and stuff that you can unlock and buy. Although again, it's a bit mean, a lot of this relies on you gaining more coins from the trader NPC that you come across to go ahead and buy more colours. And the bench itself to do this is kind of a mid to late game item. You'll also unlock maybe potions that apply poison on your weapons for a short duration, or direct fire arrows and poison arrows that you can use if you're an archer build. As you would expect, a lot of these kind of late game armors at the moment are pretty grindy to go and craft. So I've got to spend more time finding more recipes for them so I can compare a lot. But it does feel like they're all quite samey. Various weapons that you've got from the spear to the club to the sword are meant to have different modifiers. So obviously bog standard, a sword is going to do something like slashing damage, a spear might do piercing and the club might do a bit more critical hit or blunt damage. You might not notice too many weaknesses when it comes to fighting things like soldiers, but you'll notice the difference when you're trying to either use a sword on a golem or a spear, that the spear is generally better. But overall, the lack of enemy depth, the lack of different types of creatures does make combat maybe not as interesting as it could be. It really starts to get a bit more exciting when I finally started seeing more of the Gorgons, i.e. Medusa, but only one of the Gorgons. Now the devs have said they're going to be adding more as they go along, but I was still expecting just a little bit more. These Medusas are pretty cool, they basically can fire at you with their green pulsing projectile and it will stop you being able to use your little powers that, that you've acquired. So you can't dash, you can't glide, you have to wait for the timer to go down. You'll still be able to dodge and duck, but yeah, it definitely makes life a lot harder to survive against them. And this is definitely one I see more of, once we get more of the Gorgon, once more creatures get added, give them different abilities and make just everything a bit more challenging. To the game's credit, it does come with a bunch of modifiers that you can play it how you want. You can make it even harder, you can make it a lot easier in terms of combat, health for players, health for enemies. And it's where the idea that polish is there, because they've got all these features in already where a lot of games might spend ages before they get them in during early access. And they don't have creative mode yet, but they do have a bunch of commands you can use to give yourself other items or make creative mode kind of happen with free cost building. And the ability to paint your base in different colours, albeit a little bit lurid, is really good as well. And simple enough, just craft a paintbrush and you can go ahead and paint. Don't need to waste loads of time grinding for certain dyes. So will it appeal to master builders? I think so. The system's pretty simple, again, using the controller at least. You can rotate pieces nice and easily, but if you're expecting to move everything on different axes and come up with some crazy builds, maybe not. But you can blend pieces together, which I always appreciate. You get back your resources if you go ahead and demolish anything, so you can mix it up whenever you want and change things around. It's got the bog standard sort of thatch, wood and stone, but the pieces look nice. There may be more than that, but maybe I haven't got to that stage. Although I feel like I should have probably seen it by now. Craft lots of pillars, there's quite a few decorative vases and stuff, and actually I think it's all really gorgeous. The crafting benches especially are just amazing looking. I would say up there close to like Nightingale lately, in terms of how good they look. Grindy, but not super, super grindy. I've definitely played worse, but obviously you will need to unlock certain advanced crafting stations to get things like brick and stone. So if you're a builder, yeah, I do recommend the game for sure, if that's your main thing, just to find a pretty location and build something really cool. Has got really small, limited time crafting. Like in the early days, you won't notice it all. You just put an item down like a carcass and it will give you the body parts relatively quick. 
and cooking like 10 ingots takes up to a minute at max but there's no adjustments for these so you have to kind of hang around almost to go ahead and craft all the ingots that you want just so you can take them off and get more on the cook so some people might appreciate a bit more time-based crafting some might not want it at all i reckon if they add some modifiers to it like they've got modifiers for the enemy difficulty and stuff that's the way to go and the resource gathering, yeah, what you expect. Different types of wood, different ores you're going to get, potions and stuff, you need different types of fruits and shrubbery. And then you refine some of that stuff into things like rope and ingots and planks of wood. So that's all pretty good. I just wish there was a bit more to find and something more unique. Bigger ruins to discover and explore, maybe. As it's pretty copy and paste what you do find. Also, abilities to fast travel from anywhere. At the moment, there are three distinct points that you can fast travel to and from. You've got the start of Island and then two more portals north and south of the mainland. This is not enough. There's potions you can craft that give you more kind of speed or give you more stamina, but they're, unless they're going to add mounts, which I don't think they've got in the horizon, recall stones at the very minimum are needed. Something that can teleport you back to base after you've spent some time going ahead and crafting or exploring somewhere. And because of the size of the map, and because of the lack of teleportation generally easily, it does mean you're forced to kind of build in the center of the map, unless you really want a traipse across the map every time you want to go and see the trader, or get certain places. Given the stunning scenery and the different locations you could build, it is really limiting to players and forcing a lot who care about efficiency as well in making sure that they only build close to a portal. And you can't even use the north and southern portals to teleport between each other. You have to always go back to the middle one first. So yeah, even if they gave that as an option where you could choose where to teleport from each, it would make it a bit more reasonable to go to them. But some of the biomes, as pretty as they are and atmospheric, they're not really meant to actually live in. The desert seems to continuously have this raging storm, which is kind of good. After a while, you're like, can we just have a little bit less wind so I can take a look around? And the same goes for like the dark forest biome in the north as well. That gets really dark. Like, don't go in there at night time. You will not be able to see without a torch. It's really dense, packed with woods and stuff. So again, somewhere you're probably not going to necessarily build. Unless you're building right on the fringes of these places, then that could be a good option. But yeah, the combat's simple. The exploration is simple. The crafting is simple. The game is just a simple, stunning little survival game. It's pretty. It's got the actual features you would expect. It's not really doing anything brand new or earth shaking, but if you always wanted to kind of play a Greek survival themed game, then this is probably going to scratch that itch. There is an XP system very similar to Valheim and other games like Skyrim, that the more you do, the better you get at it. So the more that you sprint, eventually you're going to increase your athleticism. The more you use your bow, the better your shots will be or damage you'll do. These things are good, but it felt like progress towards them was very, very slow in some of them and just felt like I wasn't really making any headway. And the gains that you get from them seem so minimal that they're not really giving you much of a boost. Also, let's try and do something again simple with the food system. You have a potion bar that basically governs maybe your stamina mostly, and then you've got your food bar, which gives you health, stamina, and maybe other stuff. But you can only eat one piece of food, and that lasts you for that length of time, so no mixing or combining different meals. And likewise, the potions, only one active at a time. So you have to kind of be forced to choose between like a health potion, a stamina potion, or a speed potion. I think that could probably be fleshed out a little bit in some way to add ability to have a couple things active. Maybe not the potions, but at least foods, a la la Valheim, that you've got two or three different effects and statuses actually getting buffed when you eat different meals. Because yeah, it ends up getting pretty frustrating that your view's just taken a stamina potion, you've come across an enemy, now you've got worried that you're going to be losing health, so you take a healing potion and that knocks off all the stamina effects that you just had. And so many of the potions felt quite weak source, like didn't really seem like a big difference between crafting the basic stamina self that you get and then the next one up. The only true one thing of note that you really noticed difference was, was the sprinter's potion which does make life a bit easier going back and forth. So a bit of tinkering with that system and a bit of tinkering with the XP gains just to make it feel a little bit more like you are gaining extra speed, you are gaining that bit more stamina every time you level up as it will just leave players more frustrated than really relishing the chance that they're going to get good and get better. And that's pretty much it. The game has got some great building in terms of the pieces. Like I said, the decor pieces, the actual crafting benches look great, and the way that you'll be able to eventually build your pantheons looks fantastic. But I'm very worried about replayability. I can't see anyone really having another go at this, because so much of it is based on progressing by 
getting more gold coins and for that you need to kill certain amount of creatures, deposit a certain amount of resources. I reckon there's probably about maybe 15 to 20 hours of solid gameplay here before you really have to be a great builder or someone that enjoys that side of things. But overall, a good solid start. It's got everything it needs to succeed, it just needs to flesh out more now. Add more enemies, add more unique enemies, more points of interest, more treasure chests and loot that we might be able to find on this massive map. Refine how we can get across the map with some better fast travel ways or eventually, hopefully, I would like to see some mounts. It'd be really cool if there were horses. More enemies to hunt. How about some crocodiles and stuff near the rivers and some variation in the walls and stuff that you find in different biomes. So maybe like finding red walls or I guess grey walls in certain areas like the beaches or just the regular tundra. And then maybe when you get into the dark forest, you might find black walls. And some really big attention to these temples that were meant to be desecrating rather than just be challenges. Feels like that's the side content you would find in any other game. Flesh these dungeons out. Give us a reason to go through them, explore them, whether it's parkour challenges, maybe some puzzle challenge elements, moving lights and beams and stuff like that. There's no shame in saying they should probably take a look at Conan Exiles in terms of what they could do with certain dungeons and places to explore. But I don't know, I get the feeling it's not going to be that way. It does seem like it's made by a really small studio. said they kind of rushed it out of its into its release by looks of things in terms of marketing. They've got one biome that they're going to be adding at some point during the early access period or for 1.0. Likewise, character customization isn't in there yet, but that's planned for 1.0 alongside having a female character. And they are saying that they're going to try and get modding support done for it as well for 1.0. But it feels like it could deserve a bit more time in early access to add more to it rather than sprint for the finish line and just getting the game kind of done and done. I haven't mentioned much about story, that's because the story is non-existent. You get like a couple of lines at the beginning, the trader spouts kind of exposition which doesn't really make much sense or is that interesting and that's it. That's really all. I don't think they're planning on anything major either. Kind of a shame with, you know, the tapestry of what you could have with Greek mythology. But there's like zero law notes that you find, as far as I can find anyway at least. Nothing to really give a sense of depth of what the crossroads these islands are that you are basically trying to get through for whatever reason. Yeah, it needs fleshing out by the time 1.0 comes here. So yeah, if you're looking for a new survival game, you like base building, you like things to be offered to you pretty much easily, then give this one a shot. As long as you don't mind the jank and maybe the repetitiveness that was set in with certain enemies and exploration, I think this game's got a lot of merits. And for the price of it, that's probably a crucial thing. If the game had probably been $10 more, I might not necessarily always be recommending it as much. I'd probably be saying wait for another update. But for what's there and the price it is, it's quite well polished. They just need more content, they just need some more interesting systems to add to what they've already got, flesh it out a little bit with the combat, the enemies, and maybe adding just better points of interest. I'll be following its progress for sure, any big updates that come its way, and yeah, look out for more guides from me in the coming days. Until next time, Rackbags, I'll see you later.